Hi everyone, my name is Jamie. I'm a medical student based in the UK and in this video I want to share with you five apps across five categories that helped me immensely in medical school. The five categories for these apps are a task management, a knowledge base, a differential diagnosis tool, a clinical skills base and journaling. Let's get started. Kicking off the list with Things3. Things3 is my task manager of choice and I use it for absolutely everything. It's very well designed, super fast, and looks beautiful in both light and dark mode. And I started using it properly after reading Getting Things Done by David Allen. Now what I like most about Things 3 is its capture function. As soon as anything pops into my head that needs capturing, I quickly open Things 3 before I forget it. And it's as easy as dragging the plus button across the screen to add the item to my inbox. And then once a day when I get free time, I go to my inbox, look at the items that I have in my inbox, and process these items and that means just uh, assigning tasks to different projects or doing the tasks right now or just deleting them all together so let's look at these tasks in my inbox for example take take the bin out i can move this into single action project this project hold tasks that i just do one off so they, they do not really belong to a bigger project that needs multiple multiple tasks this button right here is called the magic plus button so for example, if we go to the inbox and we drag this magic plus button, you can create a new task just by doing that. And if we go to our today view, and if we drag the magic plus button there, it creates a task that is due today. So that, that means the stuff that you need to do today. I don't know, like uh, shoot a video for YouTube or something. And if you go to the main screen and drag the button there, it creates a whole new project. So you can call this project whatever you want. So if you're working on a research project, for example, you can just type research project in there. And then that is a whole project that you can drag the button again and just create like tasks in whatever order you want. And if you drag the plus button to the edge of the screen, that allows you to create a new heading. That way you can split your project into different sections and just move tasks around just for um, a better organization. Things 3 also pulls events from your calendar so that it shows you tasks and events all within the same app. So if, if I go to my upcoming view and then you can see that tomorrow I've got three events and, a, and any task would appear just below that. I like the app so much that if I go all the way down I'll have tasks even in August 2021. Moving on to my knowledge base of choice, I use the app called Amboss. Now Amboss is a paid subscription app but it's absolutely worth it. This app carried me through medical school, definitely. And although the app is mainly designed for people who are planning to take the USMLE exam and I'm studying in the UK, but the overlap is huge that still it is very, very useful to use. For example, if I open the app just to show you what it looks like. So if you go to Amboss and go to clinical knowledge and then here you can see that it's split by category. So if we go to say internal medicine, go to nephrology, um, I don't know, renal vascular disease and then vascular disease. You can see how it is split by large vessel vasculitis, medium vessel vasculitis, the anchor stuff. So if you open any of them, you can see um, it gives you the title, it gives you the definition of that disease, the epidemiology, although this, this epidemiology, I think it's, it's for the US, but still the overlap, as I said, is huge. It shows you the clinical features, what you need to diagnose it and how you treat it. And it's got pictures and descriptions for these pictures. So it's, it's really, really good. The next app is a lifesaver. It's called Diagnosis, and this is the differential diagnosis tool that I told you about earlier. You know, when you go to speak to a patient and you've taken a history from them, you've examined them and everything, and now you're kind of thinking of the differential diagnosis, right? So whenever you wanna go and present to, um, to the registrar or to the consultant or whatever, and they wanna ask you about what are your differentials. This app gives you differential diagnosis based on either the symptoms or it, you, can, you can explore differential diagnosis based on the organ system or the organ disease. So you can either explore the symptoms, as I said, you can check uh, abdo pain or whatever the presenting complaint that they have, or you can go by organ system and just check what are the differential diagnoses in that particular organ system. For example, let's, let's go and search for um, chest pain. It can show you whether it's a chest pain and a cough or a pleuritic chest pain. So if, if we just go to just generally chest pain, it shows you the things that you do not want to miss, whether it's a, a myocardial ischemia, if they have per, uh, pericarditis, aortic dissection, blah, blah, blah. Or, and then it shows you the other differentials based on the organ system, whether it's a heart related, lung related, or musculoskeletal or whatever. Or we can search for another 
present a complaint, let's say fatigue. Again, it shows you, is, is it fatigue and fever, fatigue and weight loss, or just you, you wanna see things that are just fatigue in general. So if you go to fatigue, it shows you these are the differential diagnosis for when a patient, so that, you know, so that the next time you go to present to your consultant, you can, you can sound a bit smarter. Moving on to number four, my clinical skills app of choice, and that is Geeky Medics. If you're from the UK, you, you definitely know about Geeky Medics. And I've seen a lot of people use the website, but I've not seen many people use the application itself. Now the app is actually really, really good. I think it costs about eight pounds a year, and that comes to about, I don't know, like 60 or 70p a month, and that's absolutely nothing. The best thing about the app is that you can use it offline so that when you're in the hospital and you want to examine a patient and you want a refresher on a certain examination but the hospital Wi-Fi is a bit dodgy and it's, and it's not working. And another good thing about it is that the app is linked directly to their YouTube channel so you can watch their videos directly from the app as well. The app is organized the same as the website so you can go to clinical examinations, say you go to a to respiratory system, you look at Look at how the respiratory ex examination is done, blah, blah, blah. Last but not least is my journaling app of choice, and that is day one. Not many students keep a journal for reflection, and I highly, highly suggest it if you've not tried it, just to give it a shot for a couple of days or a couple of weeks and see what you think about it. Reflecting and writing your thoughts, particularly after an emotional or a heavy day at the hospital when things go wrong or even when things go right. Just a few minutes before you go to bed, you start a new entry and you just jot down whatever comes to your mind. How you felt that day, what went wrong, what went right. That can be really liberating and it does wonders to your mental health. So if you've not tried it before, definitely give it a shot. So if I open the app right here, um, you can see I have a lot, a lot of entries. All of them obviously are, are, are private, so um, I, I have to blur them, but you know, I've, I've been doing this for the past couple of years and uh, it's a really quick and a nice exercise that can be very, very helpful. So definitely try it and see how you feel about it. Those are just five apps of the many, many dozen apps that I use. If you've liked this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And see you next time. Bye. Now the best... <laughs> Now the best thing